In this demonstration we're going to look at the interactive distortion tools in Aspire. The tool can be found uh, on both the drawing tab and also the modelling tab and that's just for convenience uh, as the tool can be applied to both vectors, uh, vector drawings and 3D components uh, in much the same way. We're going to start the demonstration using uh, this vector text here that's made up of a group of vectors and all we need to do is uh, go into the distort selected objects tool and it prompts us to make the selection of the object we want to distort so I'm going to select this group of text and it tells me straight away that with the current settings those selected vectors are valid uh, and essentially what the draw distort objects tool is going to do is create an envelope around the edge of my selected object and then it's going to allow me to modify that envelope and the changes I make to the envelope will be reflected uh, in the distortion of the object itself. So it's quite a powerful tool. Let's uh, take a look at it in action. Uh, I'm going to take the default setting at the moment which is to find the envelope based on the boundary around the edge of my selection. As we'll look at later on there are actually three options for creating the initial envelope um, but I'm going to start with the simplest of the three and it only requires one selection uh, which is the object to be distorted and I click apply and immediately it takes me to node editing mode with a new boundary created around my object and the reason for that is that I'm now able to start manipulating the envelope which has been created for me just using the standard uh, node editing tools that hopefully you're already familiar with in Aspire so I can I can move the nodes around uh, and I can also uh, as we'll see in a second adjust the uh, spans uh, in this case you can see that fairly quickly I can start to add some interesting effects to the text but I'm not limited to the simple boundary that was initially created by the tool uh, if I hover over the span here I can convert that to a Bezier curve and we can start to make our envelope much much more uh, sophisticated and interesting. So here I'm starting to add curvature in based on that initial envelope. Okay so that's the uh, the basics of creating a distorted object in the first place. I'm going to just close the tool down now and you can see that this object remains uh, as far as Aspire is concerned a distortion object. Uh, so we can do the usual manipulation of uh, moving it around and placing it uh, on the screen. We can use these vectors for modeling but also we might now want to come back in and actually edit the nodes uh, of the vector object itself. If I go to node editing mode now though you'll see that because it's a distorted object uh, Aspire will always take me back uh, to the editing of the envelope rather than the object itself. Uh, if we want to um, finish with the distortion and start working directly on the distorted vectors we need to go back into the distortion tool and we can see because we have a distorted object already the tool detects that and it uh, takes us back to the mode that we were in after we distorted this object in the first place and it allows us to go back in, edit the envelope, transform the object but also crucially it allows us to bake in the distortion and what that means if I click it is that the distortion of that shape is now applied permanently to the vectors and if we now select them they have the conventional selection behavior and if I press N to enter node editing I can come in and start manipulating them uh, uh, just as we would uh, had they been created in that way in the first place. So that's what you need to do if you want to uh, work on directly on the object once it's been distorted. So baking the distortion of course that's also the method that you can apply several distortions one over the top of the other so uh, you need to effectively permanently apply a distortion set first and then you can work on the object. OK, so I'm going to close that down and we're going to just delete uh, those vectors and I'm going to come across to the modeling tab here. Oh, I beg your pardon, I'm going to go to uh, my layers and I'm just going to turn on layer one here and then cut across to the modeling tab. And we can see here that we have a component group. Um, there's a preview. If I press page down, we can see it in both the 2D and the 3D view. And this component group just uh, is a more interesting 3D model built from the vectors we looked at earlier on. So uh, it actually comprises two independent components but I've grouped them together so there's the base plane and then the raised text. If I select that and we go into the distortion tool this time using the icon on the modeling tab although as I've said before they are essentially identical. This takes me in to the same form and structure as we saw for the vectors that created this 3D object. Uh, but what I'm going to do instead is uh, I'm going to create some additional curves so that we can use some of these uh, more advanced options for creating our envelope. So 
So if I close that down, we pop back to the Drawing tab and I just drop a line across the top of my design here. Uh, select the line, go to Node Editing Mode. I'm using the N shortcut key in this case and B to convert to a Bezier. And I'm just going to put a wave, simple wave, in there. Press Escape. I'm going to select the object, press the Control and the Shift key together. And what that does is that the Shift key locks the uh, dragging axis so that I can drag it perfectly vertically below the first curve. And the Control key means when I release the mouse button, I get a copy rather than moving the vector and um, uh, it automatically creates the copy for me. Now I can go back into my Distort Selected Objects mode. I can select my uh, 3D component. It tells me the bounding box option is OK. The selected vectors are valid. Uh, but if I select one of these other options, such as between two curves to create the envelope, it tells me that I need a top edge curve and a bottom edge curve. So if I just hold down the Shift key and add those into my selection, it tells me that they're now OK and everything is all good to go. I press, press Apply. And now it's giving me a little warning, because if you recall, this component was made up of several components, and it's going to have to convert them into a single component before we, we continue. So that's OK. I click OK. And we get a single component now. If I close down this uh, form and we go back, we'll see that our group has become a single object, which is now manipulated uh, according to the envelope. So we can do just as we did before. We can start to really twist and warp that starting envelope. We're not limited to the original envelope shape once we've created it. And we can make some really nice effects uh, on this uh, 3D uh, text. Now we have the same issue that we had before uh, if we want to come in and edit the uh, text itself as an object. Uh, because now it's a baked component, uh, generally speaking, uh, we can't do too much directly onto the shape unless we bake the uh, object again. So to do that, we can either use the Bake button, which is directly available from the, the Modeling tab, or just as with the vector text earlier in the demonstration, if we go back into the Distort Selected Objects mode, we'll see that it knows we already have a distorted object, so it won't let us create further envelopes on it. Uh, but down here, I have the option to bake the distortion in, which I can do. And now we have a conventional object again, which we can either add further distortion to, or we could start to work on it with the normal uh, component modeling tools, such as sculpting to add some smoothing in perhaps. Um, so that's the basics of creating nicely um, wavy and distorted shapes uh, using Aspire's new distortion tools.